Today's session is labeled the new disruptors. There are six really, really fascinating, extremely high profile presenters taking part in this session, covering topics as broad as social media, creative technology, uh, beacons, um, freelance working styles and systems. And it, we should really be incredibly grateful that they've all made their time available to come and tell us about what they're doing. First up, we've got Ben Howden and Pat Khan from Inlight Media, who are going to give us a bit of a presentation about what they've been up to in the beacon space. And um, I will hand straight over to them. So please put your hands together with a warm welcome for these guys. OK, hi, everyone. Today, we're pretty excited to talk about uh, what we think is a very exciting technology, and that is uh, beacons, as Luke introduced. Um, we really want to share with you the way we think this technology is changing uh, the way we interact with the real world. Uh, my name's Ben Howden. I am strategy director at Inlight Media. This is Patrick Khan, he is co-founder at Inlight Media. Uh, and we are a small digital and technology focused agency based in Melbourne. We love playing around with new technologies like beacons uh, and finding out how these technologies can solve challenges for our clients uh, and really drive meaningful business results. We're also uh, very excited to be the technology partner for PauseFest 2015. That means we did actually build the mobile app, so hopefully all of you have downloaded that app. Uh, right now, it would be awesome if you could open up the app, if you have. Uh, bottom right-hand corner, as you see up there, uh, there is a more button. There is a beacon demo uh, component in there. If you select that, make sure the beacon permissions are switched on. Uh, if you're up for it, connect via LinkedIn. We're going to do a pretty cool visualization towards the end of this session, uh, and there's a prize up for grabs. So if you can all do that now, that'd be awesome. So uh, in terms of Beacon, three key take takeaways that we want you to walk away with today. The first one, what is Beacon technology? We're going to give you a high-level overview and just tell you the things that we think are really important in terms of that technology. Number two, why it's a game changer and why a lot of the biggest brands are really jumping on this technology and tri trialling it out to drive results. Uh, and number three, from a consumer point of view, how it's actually changing the world around us and the way we interact with the physical world. Okay, so in terms of uh, what are beacons, I've got one in my hand here. These come in all different shapes and sizes and form factors. Essentially what they do, they emit a signal using Bluetooth low energy, with, which is actually a new standard of Bluetooth compared to the old one we all know. Uh, it actually doesn't drain the phone on your battery. Uh, which is an important factor. They range in price from about $5 up to $30. They have a range up to roughly 50 metres, which creates a whole bunch of different use cases uh, in terms of how you can leverage this, this different technology. Uh, what they do is they actually emit that signal and then we can have a smartphone listening out for that signal. When it comes within range of this beacon, we can then trigger an experience, and that experience can be a number of different things. We can send out a notification, uh, we can collect analytics, um, we could deliver a video, a URL, there's all kinds of things we can do, and I'll, I'll bring that to life shortly for you. Now, if you do want to use this technology, there's a few things that are really important. Obviously, you do need a physical location, and you do need to deploy the beacon uh, infrastructure to that location. We've actually done it here at PauseFest, uh, so once you've opted in, as you're moving around today, you should receive some proximity-based notifications as you, as you move around. Uh, you do actually need to have a native smartphone app, uh, and it works with pretty much most modern smartphones, uh, but the app is what does all the heavy, heavy list lifting. Uh, this essentially just is broadcasting an ID. Once the app picks that up, uh, we can actually trigger an experience, but it must be done via that application. Uh, of course, we do need to have Bluetooth on. That's the technology that is powering it. But more and more, we're seeing that most people do have it switched on as they connect to other devices around them using Bluetooth. Uh, and finally, you do need location permission to leverage this technology. Apple 
uh, and Google classify this as a location-based technology. So it's very important uh, that you think about how you ask for that location permission uh, and really give the user some context as to why you actually need it and what the value exchange is going to be in return. So what's the big deal about this technology? Why is it so exciting? Why do we think uh, it's going to disrupt a num number of industries? Uh, I think there's really two components to that question. One is uh, these things provide some pretty exciting context. They give us the opportunity to deliver interactions and experiences based on proximity to things in the physical world. So the delivery of information at the right time to the right person uh, and in the right place. So it's very powerful. You can deliver some very personalised uh, results. And the other exciting area is really the analytics. So we all spend a lot of time leveraging platforms like Google Analytics to measure our websites. Uh, but what about physical spaces? What about the real world? What about our venues? Uh, there's some really powerful anal analytics that you can get from this technology and then start optimising the way you deliver your services based on that. If you need some validation in terms of who is actually playing around with this technology, Apple's obviously leading the charge. They've got their own specification for Bluetooth Low Energy, known as iBeacon. Some, I'm sure some of you have heard of that. Uh, so they're pushing pretty hard into this space. Facebook, only three weeks ago, roughly, uh, announced that they're trialling this technology in New York City. Uh, they'll actually be, be delivering place tips, so recommendations from your friends, uh, based on your proximity to different venues throughout New York City. Uh, and then, of course, the big brands like Macca's, Coke, and a lot of the banks and airlines are already delivering results uh, using beacons. Uh, so now it's a bit of a story time. Uh, the purpose of this story is really to kind of um, share with you guys all the different types of interactions and use cases and industries this technology can touch on. Uh, so we need a bit of a persona for our story. We're going to use a guy called Derek. Derek happens to be uh, a well-to-do uh, doctor. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to describe a couple of days uh, and a bit of a story around Derek that demonstrates those interactions. So we'll kick it off. The first is in Derek's home. He has a pretty nice apartment. Uh, and in each room, there's actually a beacon that has been deployed. Uh, Derek uh, it, it gets up for the day. It's on a Friday. He has a shower. He grabs his device. He's getting ready for work. He heads into the living space of that apartment. And as that beacon picks up his proximity, uh, the room springs to life. So the appliances, the lights, and that can even be integrated with your virtual assistant. Uh, so for example, Siri. Uh, and we'll give a little uh, example of what Siri might do in this situation. Over to you, Siri. Or not. Audio, please. <laughs> Good morning, doctor. I hope you slept well. Your short black is ready. You are scheduled to operate at Blackwood Hospital at 9 a.m. and your flight to Paris is leaving at 3.30 p.m. And don't forget it's your wife's birthday. I've created a list of potential gift suggestions for you. Have a good day, doctor. So there you go, Siri providing a bit of contextual uh, advice to Derek. Uh, and when you think about virtual assistants like Siri, if we give them proximity or location context, they become a, a lot more intelligent in terms of their delivery of information. So smartphone application there. Derek uh, decides he needs to head to work now. So he heads into his garage. Lucky Derek, he happens to be driving a Tesla Model S. If you haven't already, go and check them out. Or you, if you checked them out yesterday, you know they're, uh, they're pretty good vehicles. So there's a beacon in the garage. As Derek enters uh, that garage, the car switches on automatically. The doors unlock. Uh, the garage door rolls up. And of course, Derek's first appointment for the day automatically comes up on the inbuilt uh, navigation system. So Derek uh, makes his way to his first destination, happens to be the hospital where he's completing his rounds. There is a beacon at the entrance to that hospital uh, emitting a signal up to about 50 metres. And other doctors and employees, as they enter the hospital, receive contextual information, so directions on where they need to head to. And the whole, whole idea here is really to optimise that flow of employees. And again, uh, Siri can be involved here. So over to you, Siri. Welcome, doctor. Your first appointment is on level three, room 34. 
let me know if you need directions. Thank you, Siri. Uh, okay, so a uh, bit of contextual information. So Derek's going to head to room 34 on level two. Uh, you can actually do wayfinding uh, using beacons as well. So there's a navigation component there. Um, so Derek arrives at this room. He, he's using an iPad to help him deliver uh, his treatment for the day. Uh, and that iP iPad is obviously Bluetooth enabled. Each patient's room has a beacon in the room assigned to that patient. As Derek enters the room, the patient information is automatically brought up on the screen. Uh, so Derek has access to all the details he needs to de deliver those services. So another uh, application there. So Derek's uh, completed his rounds in the hospital for the day. It's lunchtime, it's time to get some food. He heads down to the local cafe that he frequents quite regularly. Uh, he happens to have the app for that cafe as he walks in. Uh, of course, we've got beacons in here, pushing out relevant specials uh, or perhaps some of the meals that he orders regularly via that application. He can add that to cart, sends a docket straight to the printer in the kitchen. Uh, enjoys his meal when he's done, he's in a bit of a rush, he can walk straight out. That same be beacon in the cafe can detect an exit event and automa automatically charge his credit card. So a nice seamless transaction. Shopping context. If you were listening to Siri, uh, she did remind Derek that it was his wife's birthday on that list, happened to be a Burberry bag. If you haven't figured out already, Derek's doing pretty well for himself. Uh, and Burberry is pushing out a notification as he is walking past that Burberry store for that particular bag. That's good enough to entice Derek into the store, so he heads into the store, uh, and of course that product is presented on his screen. So it can kind of show you that Beacon Technology can provide product information when you're standing in front of it in store. Uh, Derek's already signed up to Apple Pay, so he's good to go. He simply uh, hits the Apple Pay button, uses the thumbprint scanner, that transaction is complete, and he walks out with his wife's gift. Uh, Derek is uh, really spoiling his wife. Looks like we've got an image uh, missing from that one, but he's actually heading to LAX airport because he's taking his wife away on a trip for her birthday. Uh, they are off to Paris, uh, and as they arrive at the airport, the Virgin app pushes a notification to Derek's device, letting him know uh, that his flight is scheduled to leave from gate 42 and giving him some relevant information to help guide that experience. He heads to gate 42. All right, we've got a picture now, that's good. Uh, and he, each gate actually has a beacon assigned to it. And this is something the airports are definitely already looking at. Uh, but as he comes to that gate, the boarding pass automatically comes up on his device. In this case, we've used uh, passbook, and you can use passbook and beacons to actually pull up passes from passbook at the right place and time. Okay, it looks like uh, there's a couple of issues with the images, but we'll carry on. So the flight's over, they've arrived at Paris. Uh, this is Paris Airport, uh, and Derek and his wife now need some transport to get to their hotel. Derek's a bit of an Uber traveller, so Uber have tapped into those beacons at the airport. Uh, and they're pushed a notification saying, hey, welcome to Paris, book an Uber, we've got a 10 minute guarantee. Uh, so Derek uh, takes that option rather than waiting in the, in the taxi rank for half an hour. So again, nice seamless interaction for Derek. Uh, the next scenario, so they've, uh, it's the next day, they've stayed at the hotel, they're heading down to the famous Louvre Museum. Uh, in Paris, they've done a bit of research already. They've downloaded the Louvre application on their phone, which offers a number of virtual uh, tour tours available. The Louvre has deployed beacons throughout that museum and across all the different artworks and pieces there. Uh, they select the Louvre Masterpieces Tour, uh, which is a virtual tour via the application, and then they can go ahead and, and move through the museum. Uh, the app provides directions as they go through, and then when they're standing in front of individual pieces of artwork, the app can bring up contextual information. So this is one of the Italian master's pieces. Uh, we've got an opportunity to uh, view a short video uh, and a little bit of a history about that particular artist. 
Now, uh, Derek and his wife leave the Louvre Museum, and this is a really uh, simple application that can be used across a lot of different categories, but a simple feedback prompt and capturing that data. So what did you think of your experience? Give us a little bit of feedback, and we can capture all that, and then we can use that data to understand what consumers thought of that experience and start getting some insights out and then optimizing the way we deliver those services. So that's it for Derek. Uh, so just to kind of wrap that all up, we did touch on a number of different industries there, and there are many more that beacons can be applied to. Uh, but the smart home space, so using beacons to really provide smart services, and certainly the likes of Apple and Google are already playing heavily in this space or definitely investigating it, so I think we'll, we'll see a lot more to come there. Workforce automation and asset tracking, so a bit more of kind of the enterprise and commercial space. How do we understand the movement of people and flows? And not only that, high-value assets, so healthcare, mining, uh, construction, all those types of industries, there's huge applications for this technology. Uh, retail, we all have probably heard about retail, that's where all the hype is in terms of delivering content offers at the right time in the right place, uh, and then travel and tourism. So really optimising the experience for consumers, uh, and of course collecting that data and delivering experiences again at the right time in the right place. Uh, so that's the end of the story. I'm going to hand over to Pat now, and we're going to attempt a live beacon visualisation. So hopefully uh, you've downloaded the app and we've got some people connected via LinkedIn. Over to you, Pat. Thank you, Ben. So Ben's uh, showed us some of the awesome ways that we can use this technology um, in our day-to-day -day lives, both from a consumer perspective and uh, in an enterprise and business scenario. Um, I am hoping to now bring that to life with a bit of a live demonstration. Please bear with me. Um, I, this demonstration both involves technology as well as audience participation, so it's one of a bit of a risky one. Um, but you can help, so hopefully some of you do have the PauseFest application downloaded and have connected via LinkedIn in the Beacon demo page. And what Ben is going to do is help choose uh, five to ten people, hopefully from the audience, and again, um, the chance to win uh, one of the great LifeX Globes, um, the guys that are on site today as well. So just to provide some context, um, while hopefully some of you are logging in to LinkedIn, um, imagine you're at a networking event um, like Pause, um, but you've decided to come alone. You're at a bar and you've got a screen behind the bar um, showing some virtual information around um, the people that, that are, are attending. So imagine if using LinkedIn, uh, that screen could connect um, you with other people within the room who you may know. So have mutual acquaintances with and use that information to strike up a conversation. So over to you, Ben. Hopefully we have some uh, participants. If you can raise your hand if you want to join in. So I'll get you to come down onto the stage. So, as Ben showed you before, we have one of these beacon devices on stage. It's set to uh, broadcast to about one to two metres. Um, and obviously you have the smartphone application uh, with PortsFest. Well, we've got, uh, we've got a few now. <laughs> um, and so using the technology, what we're going to do is connect uh, with the Beacon technology and your LinkedIn accounts and try to visualise um, the connections between each other. So hopefully you can come onto stage and come closer to the Beacon. If you can have the app open, it's a bit more responsive. Um, it, there can be a delay with the, uh, with the application off. So Anton, uh, landscape architect. So if you keep, keep coming past. No relationship there. <laughs> oh, I might. No. So as you can see on the right-hand side, we've got the profile information coming up um, of these users as they come in range of the beacons. Um, unfortunately, no one here knows each other. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. So straight away, you can see uh, some connections there, um, so hopefully maybe that'll give you someone to, to catch up with after our talk. 
Um, but yeah, you can see how this, uh, this well, this, <laughs> um, you can see how this technology can possibly be used uh, potentially in, a, in a, a banking or retail environment as customers enter the store. You can bring up their profile information and then serve them with a better experience. So yeah, have a look up on, scre have a look up on screen, see who you know. Maybe you can uh, go and grab a, grab a coffee with someone afterwards. Got everyone? <laughs> George. He knows everyone. All right. Yeah, so hopefully uh, if this works, this should isolate one of you guys. James Skeller. Jamie. Yes. Jamie Skeller. There you go. Thanks very much. So as I said, this is a quick demo that we mocked up um, to visualize how this technology could be used, but there's heaps of different applications um, where you can utilize this similar technology to provide better experiences um, or create something unique um, like this using LinkedIn. I'll hand it back over to Ben. Thank you, Pat. All right, thanks, guys. That uh, concludes our presentation. So hopefully you got some really awesome insights into this technology and how it works, and you can think about how you might be able to leverage it uh, for your business. We've actually built a software platform around Beacon. It's, it's called uh, Lighthouse, and if you go and purchase some beacons and you've got an app, you can, you can set it up pretty easily. We're actually in the atrium at the Startup Expo doing some more cool visualization stuff like this. Uh, so if you want to chat more, please come down and see us. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Uh, it's kind of amazingly impressive. Murray had to exhale momentarily when that actually worked. <laughs> um, two things stood out from that. We've got just a couple of minutes. We can probably grab a question. Um, the first question for me is how anyone could get through that presentation without wanting to punch Derek in the face. Um, you got a question? All right. Or... So beacons are pretty cool, but like, what are the legalities of putting beacons in places that don't belong to you? Uh, essentially, I, I think that's the same with, with any technology. You need ownership of the venue or you need permission. Uh, there was a case, I think, in New York City where uh, there was a company that deployed a whole bunch of beacons in phone boxes and it got shut down pretty quickly. Um, so like any technology, opt-in and considering the law in terms of direct marketing is really important. So making sure the right terms are in place for your application, making sure the opt-in process is clear, and making sure when you deploy beacons you have permission to do so. Cool, cool. thanks. No worries. Uh, anybody else? What's stopping a person from hijacking a beacon? Uh, at the moment, they, we can't. Um, so there's two considerations there. One is um, to meet Apple's specification, which allows you to um, trigger the phone when it's in your pocket or when the application's closed, you need to meet Apple's specification for the signal that you push out. Um, anyone can scan it for that signal. Um, there was actually a really interesting use case overseas, I think um, somewhere in Europe, uh, where I think, let's say, two shoe stores, one's Nike, one's Adidas, these aren't the stores, but we use it as an example, um, where Nike had deployed beacons to all their stores to integrate with their app. Adidas marketing team had a great idea to go out and sniff all those beacons and build it into their app. And what they did is when users walked into the Nike store, um, the Adidas prompted a notification saying you have 100 seconds to get to the Adidas store um, and for each second you lose 1% off the discount. And so these people are coming into Nike and just running out to Adidas <laughs> store and had no idea what was going on. So. Um, it is, it is a, bit of a, a bit of an issue. Um, there is, you can secure the beacons um, when you're using a non-iBeacon um, um, uh, signal. Um, but yeah, we might see some changes to that in the future. Um, and obviously the legalities, um, so obviously around placement, but then also stealing someone else's um, beacon signal um, may come into play. 
I might just add to that as well. So there's a little bit of a concept happening around Beacon as infrastructure. So it's, it's kind of important to, to realise that, yeah, that can become an issue, but it can also become a benefit too. So thinking about an airport as an example, if we deploy that those beacons as infrastructure in a controlled way, and then we can let many parties um, tap into that. So there might be employees or security or cleaners at the airport, uh, and those beacons are used to collect data at the same time, the airlines might tap into that to enhance the, uh, the user experience for their customers as well. So it's kind of like, you know, Fed Square as an example, they could deploy beacons and let many different parties, including, including PAUSE, tap into that network.